Well, it's season three, and Merle got a great deal renting a seaside mansion named Dragon House. I wonder why it was such a good deal. My name is Dylan Earshook and I am the information collector. Today I'm coming to you from Hendersonville, North Carolina, sharing some of the downtown sites. As things reopen, Hendersonville is the place to come for a road trip. I've started here in front of Moe's Original Barbecue. I've had their barbecue several times and the impressive thing about Moe's is one day I went into the uh, courthouse, old courthouse, which is a museum also, amazing museum. And when I came out, parked right over here in front of Moe's, they were closed because they'd run out of barbecue. When you have a restaurant that serves barbecue and they run out of barbecue, that means two things. One, they're really good. And two, it's fresh barbecue. So Moe's Original Barbecue, good service and uh, good barbecue. Last Tuesday, Chevron issued a press release announcing the beginning of production at the Nzinga oil field. They said that um, despite 60 years of production, this oil field still has a lot of oil. And they estimate that four wells, which are currently in operation, will produce 5,000 barrels a day. Last Tuesday, the Millennium Challenge Corporation, an agency of the United States government dedicated to foreign development, uh, announced a memorandum of understanding had been signed with both Burkina Faso and Cote d'Ivoire concerning a regional energy grid to connect to the West African power pool. These involve, this particular agreement, involves high voltage transmission lines from Ferkes Dagu in Cote d'Ivoire to Bobo Dialasu in Burkina Faso. Um, Millennium Challenge Corporation has extensive development experience in the region with 400 million dollars of electric grid development in Burkina Faso benefiting 8 million people. Um, the uh, corporation has spent half a billion dollars in Cote d'Ivoire for to improve road conditions, for enhanced truck parking at the port of Abidjan, and for training teachers. Last Tuesday, Bahrain's Information and E-Government Authority announced the May trade numbers, and they were good. Uh, the top three elements for import were iron ore, aluminum oxide, and aluminum oxide is used for everything from sunscreen to glass to abrasives to paint to electric insulators to fluorescent lamps. And the third highest import was four-wheel drive cars. The top three countries they imported from were Brazil, China, and Australia. And the value of imports was up 60% from May of last year. The top exports were to Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and China. The top exports were iron ore, aluminum alloy and wires, 
which I guess that's where the aluminum went, um, and semi-finished iron and steel. Now, obviously, a lot of things get re-exported, and the re-exports were up 38% from last year, which shows increasing demand in the region as a whole. Uh, the top re-exports were four-wheel drive vehicles, plane engines, uh, cigarettes, and gold ingots, which is very interesting, but that's, uh, that's what they said. Last Monday, Germany's Heidelberg Cement announced the release of its 2020 sustainability report. Um, they have a goal of dropping their CO2 per ton of cement to 520 gram kilo 525 kilograms per ton by 2025 and 500 kilograms per ton by 2030. They want carbon neutrality by 2050. Uh, Um, this is a big company, 11.3 billion in revenue, uh, global presence, over 50 nations, and they have 17 key actionaries they're addressing, uh, including water management, CO2 emissions, transport and logistics, species protection, and sustainable land management. Now, a few of the um, highlights of the report, they have a new low water grinding unit in Morocco's Nador region. They, um, in Germany, they began 3D printing structures using cement with a 70% lower carbon footprint. They um, have introduced technology for enforced incarbonation to store more CO2 in the cement than previously, that previously had been released. Um, and they are saying that 90% of their procurement value will be invested locally around the globe. They're in 50 countries. This is a big deal. And in fact, they uh, point out to certain countries in Africa where they've been replaced imported clinkers, which is like kind of rocks they put in cement. With locally produced ground rock. Last Friday, the United Kingdom issued a press release concerning the uh, Highways England government agency. They are updating the highway code. They are going to refine telling the where people should not stop. They will uh, attempt to get people to vary their speed in congestion not drive while tired, and among other things, not to tailgate. Um, these folks sound like they're on I-85. Uh, this will be part of a five million pound ad campaign. They are amending 33 highway rules and creating two new highway rules. Last Friday, also, the Ministry of Defense issued a press release uh, talking about Defense Secretary Ben Wallace's trip to Serbia to meet Serbian President Vucic and Serbian Defense Minister Stefanovic. They discussed military cooperation and Western Balkan security. Recently, 70 British troops 
uh, were involved in exercise Platinum Wolf in the Balkans. Um, and they set up a memorial dedicating it to the United Kingdom Special Operations Executive Troops who, between May 44 and June 1945, built an airfield in Nazi-occupied Yugoslavia, right under the noses of the Germans. Um, with the help of the partisans, they evacuated 2,400 Allied airmen, 11,000 wounded partisans, and 400 wounded civilians. And I, uh, um, this is the theater where former presidential candidate George McGovern flew his B-24 over. He flew in and out of Yugoslavia on missions during the Second World War. And um, he would have been one of those evacuated had he been shot down. 